Wake that ass up. In the morning. The Breakfast Club. I mean, the guy we are the Breakfast Club. Lauren LaRosa's filling in for Jess. And let's get in some front page news. Good morning, Morgan. Good morning, good morning. Happy Monday. Yes, let's get into it. So in case you missed it, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. suspended his 2024 presidential campaign on Friday. The independent candidate made the announcement while speaking in Phoenix, Arizona. Let's hear more from RFK Jr. It's with a sense of victory and not defeat that I'm suspending my campaign. And now to throw my support to President Trump. Yeah, he said he's backing Trump because he best embodies his priorities and added that Trump asked him to serve in his administration right around the time of his assassination attempt. Now, Kennedy said after Trump's call, he did reach out to Kamala Harris about having the same discussions, but she never returned his calls. Uh, Kennedy believes the Democratic Party of his father and uncle, uh, John F.K. and RFK Sr., has become beholden to corporations and other entities. He also told Fox News on Sunday that he realized he had no path to victory after he was kept off major news networks and blocked out of presidential debates. Now, only moments after uh, his announcement, RFK Jr. hit the campaign trail in Arizona with former President Donald Trump. Let's hear more from RFK on the campaign trail with Trump. The best way to build a safe America is to rebuild our industrial base and rebuild the middle class in this country. And don't you want a president who's going to get us out of the wars and who's going to rebuild the middle class in this country? And don't you want a president who's going to protect America's freedoms? And don't you want a president that's going to make America healthy again? Yeah, so during remarks, Trump thanked Kennedy for the endorsement and called him incredible champion for conservative values. He also insulted Vice President Kamala Harris, called her a communist fascist, and suggested she forced Biden out of the race in an unconstitutional coup. Let's hear more from uh, former President Trump in, from that uh, rally in Arizona. We're going to win Arizona. We're going to defeat comrade Kamala Harris. And we're going to win back our beautiful White House. We're going to win it back. We're going to win it back in record force. She was the border czar. She presided over the worst border in history, not American history, world history. I will establish a new independent presidential commission on assassination attempts. And they will be tasked with releasing all of the remaining documents pertaining to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Yeah, I'm not I, sure that's what the people want. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree. I saw more convers. I did see more conversation about uh, RFK Jr. dropping out this weekend on all the cable news channels than I than I did damn near about the DNC, especially in regards to Kamala's speech, being that she spoke Thursday. That that was like a B or C story. Um, but I don't know if him endorsing Trump is gonna move the needle for Trump. I. I don't, I don't know. You know, a lot of people I, feel like uh, independents are disruptors, that all they're doing is really disrupting the uh, president election. What, what's your thoughts on that? That's how his family feels. Mm -hmm. His family from yeah. the beginning. Yeah, when, when, uh, when Robert F. Kennedy Jr. came out and said he wanted to run, his family from the beginning said that's exactly what he's doing. But I'm a little confused. And I was at a live event that he did. I spoke there. I thought that his policies and what he was saying he wanted to do, if anywhere close to elected, which I knew wasn't going to happen, were closer to... Kamala Harris. Yeah. And, and so Democrats. I to thought so, too. I know they flip back and forth, but the flip like that is kind of crazy. I thought so, too. And it's yeah. interesting when he says, uh, you know, he feels like Democrats are beholden, you know, the corporate America. That can't be mm -hmm. your reasoning, because all politicians, Republicans and Democrats, Definitely are beholden to corporate money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah to your point, uh, Lauren, uh, members of the Kennedy family are criticizing uh, that decision. They've actually issued a statement signed by five Kennedys uh, calling the move a betrayal to basically the um, the legacy of what uh, Robert F. Kennedy and mm -hmm. John F. Kennedy stood for. So I don't understand why it's getting so much news attention. It's, like, be, it's I, because I of what his, it's his family. So it's his attention. family name. It's like a family never name. Got no I, feel, yeah, I feel like he's getting more attention this weekend than he's gotten throughout his whole campaign. So why give yeah. it any energy now? I think the plan was he thought he was going to get this attention. He would use it to shift against Kamala because he obviously doesn't want her to win. But it's it's more of like just a talking point, honestly. I just keep telling you. definitely uh, think that's exactly why he made the announcement on Friday to overshadow DNC. For so sure. why let it overshadow? Why, mm -hmm. why, why do CNN, MSNBC, why do these networks let it overshadow? They pick what the headlines mm -hmm. are. They pick what the stories are. Because controversy sells. And I don't think he it's necessarily wants to go with Trump. I just feel like Trump is the only one that called him back. Yes. Trump made yeah. him feel special. It's like that girl, he like, you made him feel special, so he picked back. But, yeah, that's that's what that felt like. 
All for right. sure. Well, that is front page news. Now, get it off your chest, Morgan. We'll see you next hour. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Let us know how your weekend was, what you're feeling, what you're doing, all that good stuff. And again, salute to all the Virgos out there. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Lauren LaRosa's filling in for Jess. And let's get back in some front page news. Good morning, Morgan. Good morning, good morning. So, yeah, Republican vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance, he says he believes former President Trump would veto a federal abortion ban if he's elected in November. In an interview with NBC's Meet the Press, Vance said Trump has been very clear that he wants to leave the abortion question up to the states in order to focus on bigger issues. Let's hear more from Republican VP hopeful J.D. Vance. Donald Trump's view is that we want the individual states and their individual cultures and their unique political sensibilities to make these decisions because we don't want to have a nonstop federal conflict. Donald Trump wants to end this culture war over this particular topic. If Kamala, excuse me, if California wants to have a different abortion policy from Ohio, then Ohio has to respect California and California has to respect Ohio. So, yes, this comes after comments from congressional Republicans where they indicated they would continue to push for a federal ban, even if former President Trump were elected. Another issue that is pressing for the American people is the war in Gaza. U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders, he says the United States should cut off aid to the Israeli prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu's government. The Vermont Independent told ABC's this week that the U.S. should not be sending Israel aid while its military is killing in a innocent Palestinians and creating a humanitarian ca- um, catastrophe in Gaza. Excuse me. Let's hear more from Senator Sanders. I happen to think that we should not be giving another nickel uh, to Netanyahu's right wing extremist government. They certainly had a right to defend themselves against the atrocious Hamas attack. They never had the right, do not have the right to go to war against the entire Palestinian people. American taxpayer dollars should not go to starve children in Gaza. That is my view. Others may disagree with me. And Bernie Sanders is Jewish, so that says a lot. Mm -hmm. While he acknowledged the Biden administration is currently taking a different stance on the issue by continuing to send aid, uh, Sanders also said he hopes that uh, potential... um, uh, uh, that Kamala Harris's administration um, would change policy. Also, uh, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker says the Biden administration is working to prevent escalation in the Middle East following the latest clash between Israel and Hezbollah militants in Lebanon. The New Jersey Democrat told CNN State of the Union U.S. officials are speaking with all parties in the region in the hopes of stopping a wider war. And he said the Joint Chiefs of Staff have been sent to the region amid the height, heightened attention, um, heightened tensions. Excuse me. And um, I didn't have this uh, story on my rundown, but I definitely wanted to switch up and uh, add this. So a Confederate monument that stood in Atlanta for over 100 years has been replaced by a statue honoring good trouble and necessary trouble civil rights hero John Lewis. Renowned Jamaican Mm -hmm. sculptor Basil Watson uh, created the John Lewis Memorial, which was installed on August 16th in front of the historic Decatur (laughs) Courthouse in Atlanta. The statue stands 12 feet tall atop a granite pedestal and depicts Lewis with his hands over his heart. Um, a gesture he frequently used to express his love for other others. It replaced a 30-foot Confederate monument that was erected in 1908 by the United Daughters of the Confederacy. And uh, if we have one more, attention Walmart shoppers. Great Value is recalling nearly 10,000 bottles of apple juice sold at Walmarts nationwide. Uh, Don't get the apple juice right now. The Food and Drug Administration announced that the juice contains unsafe levels of inorganic arsenic. Uh, The recalled juice was sold in six packs of eight-ounce plastic bottles with a Best Buy date of December 2024. So, yeah, go with the Mott's or something else, you know, not the generic brand if you're going to get some apple juice from Great Value. I I can't afford the Mott's. You see how the price is already through the roof, uh, Morgan? The the grocery (laughs) prices are already astronomical. The Great Value is what I can afford, and that's not even safe? Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. What is the world you. coming to, man? Maybe, maybe just go to the self-checkout line. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> now just get her wow. for, 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 I for can't afford bail. The juice. <laughs> if I can't Morgan. afford Mots, Morgan, I Jesus, can't afford Morgan bail. Got it. You got Morgan number, Morgan got Morgan it. Morgan bail us out. Jesus, oh, Morgan. Man. Wink, wink. Yeah, so that's your front page news. Follow me on social at Morgan Media, M-O-R-G-Y-N-M-E-D-I-A. And for more news coverage, make sure you're following at Black Information Network. We're rolling out all of our DNC coverage. We uh, had a bunch of um, exclusive interviews and those will roll out in the next few ye- weeks as we um, at- prepare for Congressional Black Caucus. Um, make sure you download the free iHeartRadio app and visit BINnews.com. Talk to y'all tomorrow. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.